Hi everyone, welcome to Imaging Study. Today we are going to see a case of abdominal aortic aneurysm. An elderly male patient came with pulsatile central abdominal lump for more than 5 years. He had also complained about the back pain, leg pain and scrotal pain. In case of abdominal aortic aneurysm, this type of pain pattern is very important. If you see scrotal pain, then possibly the testicular artery or that area may show dilatation. In case of leg pain, you may get dilated iliac vessels. And in case of back pain, you may get renal vessel dilatation also. So, we have to carefully look for the branches. Let's see what we have got on ultrasound. Here you can see the longitudinal section of the abdominal lump. You can see a cystic area, which is actually the fusiform dilatation of the abdominal aorta. This abdominal aortic wall shows some hypoechoic areas, which are nothing but the mural thrombi. The aneurysm extends up to the distal branches. So these are the iliac vessels which also got affected. So it means that this is actually the infrarenal aorta which is the common site for dilatation in elderly patients or in atherosclerotic disease. Here's another a little bit magnified view and you can see in longitudinal and transverse sections showing the mural thrombi within the fusiform dilated aorta and it extends up to the terminal branches of aorta. Here is another view. It looks like a dissection but it is not. Rather it is the wall of moral thrombi. It is quite easy to differentiate between the dissection and the moral thrombus in confusing cases. You can just use the color Doppler. There will be flow within the separated part in dissection but in moral thrombi there will be no flow in this part. This is the infer vena cover you can see here in this cross section view. This is the terminal branches that is the common iliac artery on the left side which is also showing fusiform dilatation with luminal mural thrombi. Here is the image you can see the longitudinal section of the infrarenal aorta showing dilatation. This dilatation pattern is fusiform and you can see some ecogenic areas within the wall which are nothing but mural thrombi. Here is the terminal part. It is showing another dilated portion which is nothing but the terminal branches dilatation. Here is another view on the distal lateral part of the aorta showing large mural thrombi. Here is the approximate measurement of the most dilated part in cross section. Make sure to measure the diameter from outer to outer. You can measure both anteroposterally and transversely and it is showing 8.25 cm which is huge. Here is another view. You can see the dilated aorta and this is the mural thrombus at the luminal wall. Again the confusing picture like a dissection but this is nothing but the thrombus. And the picture of this thrombus. Here is the right and left common iliac arteries. Both are dilated. The right one is around 3.5 cm in size and the left one is around 4.4 cm. This is also not dissection rather it is the branching area. You just check on longitudinal section or with color Doppler and the confusion will be over. Here is another picture with the largest thrombus area. Here is the confusing part of the left common iliac artery where you can see two branches. Let's jump into the color Doppler images. 
Here's the color Doppler view and you can see a mixture of flow within the aneurysmal part. You see this is the thrombus which shows no flow within and the flow is getting mixed within the aneurysmal part. So it is showing a yin yang pattern or Pepsi sign. You know the Pepsi logo? It looks similar to this. Now if you tell me to take sample from this aneurysm, I would love to take from the middle part. So you can get to and fro flow that is towards an air from the transducer flow. So you will get bidirectional flow on pulse wave Doppler. Here's the picture. You can see the longitudinal section of the aorta on grayscale image on right side. And on left side, you can see the Pepsi sign or yin yang pattern. Here's the yin yang pattern. And the color Doppler picture showing mural thrombus and Pepsi sign. Here's the left common iliac artery which is also showing mural thrombus and yin yang pattern. So the luminal diameter reduction due to thrombus is more prominent on the terminal branches. Here's the picture of the left common iliac artery which is showing the mural thrombus and luminal yin yang pattern. Now here's the sample. I don't know why my machine didn't show any live waveform. Anyway, you can see bidirectional flow here. Some flow are getting towards transducer and some away from the transducer. As because I have taken sample from the middle part of the aneurysm where mixing of flow is present. Here's another picture and you can see this to and fro flow pattern. And the picture of the to and fro flow pattern. I always tell you that if you have a 3D transducer, you should try to take 3D image from any lesion that comes in front of you. So we had a 3D transducer here, not the best quality one, but we took a 3D image of this aneurysm. You can see this 3D image showing the dilated cystic area and some thrombi within the wall. So in summary, a fusiform aneurysmal dilatation of the infrarenal abdominal aorta is seen with luminal irregular mural thrombi. The dilatation and mural thrombi extend up to the terminal branches. Color Doppler shows internal yin yang pattern or Pepsi sign. To and fro flow is seen on pulse wave Doppler. There was no retroperitoneal hematoma or paraaortic fat stranding, which should be present in case of rupture. So this is a case of abdominal aortic aneurysm. Now the take home message. Remember that ultrasound usually doesn't provide sufficient detail for the surgeons to do some procedures in aortic aneurysm. There might be more aneurysm in the proximal part or distal part which you may miss, especially due to bowel gas. Those are important when you are doing some vascular procedures. For endovascular treatments and regional branch vessels assessment, CT angiogram or other imaging modalities are really helpful. An aneurysm never gets a smaller on follow-up, so be careful about reporting the diameter. You should check the previous data if available and compare it with yours. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel and try to follow us on other social platforms. See you on the next one. Have a nice day.